The latest estimate of the World Health Organization shows that 1.28 billion adults worldwide suffer from hypertension that substantially increase the morbidity and mortality from cardiovascular and renal disease. Even though about 10% of hypertensive individuals suffer from endocrine hypertension, the diagnosis is often delayed or even never made because of inadequate awareness among physicians. This textbook, written by the global experts in the field, is a treatise on endocrine hypertension that addresses in depth the etiology, pathophysiology and molecular underpinnings, the differential diagnosis and the management of endocrine hypertension, including all the practical aspects of treatment and follow-up. Chapter 1 is an editorial by Joseph M. Papachin and Cornelius J. Fernandez, the editors of the textbook. This chapter gives an overview of individual chapters of the book with brief description of individual disorders causing endocrine hypertension and some emerging concepts on genetic screening of cases and the practical aspects of diagnosis. Chapter 2 by Cornelius J. Fernandez, Fami W. F. Hanna, Carol Pakak and Matthew Nazari is on catecholamines and blood pressure regulation. This basic science chapter gives details about the synthesis and metabolism of catecholamines their receptors and effects on vascular hemodynamics and various catecholamine excess and deficiency states associated with disease including endocrine hypertension. Chapter 3, Adrenocortical Hormones and Blood Pressure Regulation by Anna Sanders, Cornelius J. Fernandez and Rosio Gama is another basic science chapter discussing the synthesis and metabolism of adrenocortical hormones their receptors and their role in blood pressure homeostasis in health and in hormone excess states. Chapter 4 by Joseph M. Papachin, Cornelius J. Fernandez and Constantine Statakis is another basic science chapter, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and blood pressure regulation. This chapter discusses the physiological aspects of HPA axis and the biological clock systems in health and various disease states. Chapter 5 by Gino Saravalli and Guido Grassi discusses the basic science and clinical aspects of renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system on blood pressure homeostasis in health and disease with an update on pharmacotherapy of hypertension with RAAS modulators. Several genetic disorders are associated with hypertension which follow Mendelian inheritance pattern termed as monogenic hypertension. Chapter 6, Monogenic Hypertension and Overview by Cornelius J. Fernandez, Joseph M. Papachin and U. I. Scholl discusses the clinical basic science, molecular and genetic basis of these uncommon disorders. Primary aldosteronism is the most common cause of endocrine hypertension, which accounts for about 10% of the hypertensive population in the community and 20% of cases attending hypertension clinics. In their chapter Primary Aldosteronism or Corn Syndrome, Filippo Saccato, Irene Tizianel, Giacomo Voltan and Franco Mentaro provide a comprehensive update of the clinical, pathophysiological, diagnostic and therapeutic aspects of primary aldosteronism. Chapter 8, Familial Hyperaldosteronism by Joseph M. Papachin, Cornelius J. Fernandez and David S. Jeller is a clinical update review of the genetic, diagnostic and therapeutic aspects of these rare disorders causing endocrine hypertension. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia is an uncommon group of inherited genetic disorders and a subgroup of these diseases can present with endocrine hypertension. In Chapter 9, Congenital Adrenal Hyperplasia and Hypertension, Busra Gurpinar and Tulay Guran provide us the latest evidence on the clinical, molecular, pathophysiological, diagnostic and management aspects of these rare disorders. Chapter 10, Endocrine Hypertension, Discovering the Inherited Causes by Faranak Asadi, Nakisa Human, Mojgan Mazahari and Fatima Gain Sharbaf is a snapshot review of various familiar disorders associated with endocrine hypertension.
Chapter 11, Pheochromocytomas and Hypertension by Yuri Martin Gurman and Aina Luisa Meyer is a comprehensive review of the genetic, clinical, molecular, diagnostic and therapeutic aspects of this uncommon but unique cause of endocrine hypertension. In their extensive clinical update review in the chapter 12, Paragangliomas and Hypertension, Andre Petrak and Thomas Zalenka elaborate the clinical, diagnostic, pathobiological and management aspects of paragangliomas. Diagnosis and management of ACTH-dependent Cushing syndrome is a huge challenge to clinicians across the world. Chapter 13 by Stuti Fernandez, Elena Valimo and Maria Flesrio makes this task easy by enabling physicians with provision of the latest evidence on the clinical picture, diagnosis and complications of these uncommon disorders with special emphasis on pathophysiology and management of hypertension. Chapter 14, Adrenal Cushing Syndrome by Oscar Ragnarsson provides us the current evidence on the pathobiology, lab diagnosis, complications and management of adrenal Cushing syndrome and hypertension. Both growth hormone excess and deficiency are associated with endocrine hypertension. Chapter 15, Hypertension in Acromegaly and Growth Hormone Deficiency by Gabriela Mihai and Marta Kobonitz enable us to easily understand the complexities in the pathophysiology, comorbidities and complications and the diagnosis and management of these rare disorders. Both hyper and hypothyroidism and primary hyperparathyroidism are associated with hypertension. Naomi Swartbart and Duncan Topless provide us the pathophysiology, clinical picture, evaluation algorithm and management of these disorders in a nutshell in the chapter 16, Hypertension in Thyroid Disease and Hyperparathyroidism. Obesity is commonly associated with hypertension and obstructive sleep apnea. OSA has a high prevalence of 15 to 24% in the general population, especially among obese individuals. Dominic Odrodonka and Thomas M. Barber provide us the snapshot clinical update on the complexities behind obesity, insulin resistance and OSA and hypertension in Chapter 17. Endocrine hypertension in children is uncommon and associated with unique features when compared to that in adults. Chapter 18 by Padma Valyapati and Ambika P. Ashraf is a comprehensive clinical update review of the diseases, their clinical profiles, diagnosis and treatment of these disorders in the pediatric population. Pregnancy is a unique state of marked anatomic and physiological alterations in females and therefore disorders causing endocrine hypertension also present with different pathobiological behavior in pregnant women. Felix Jebba Singh and Nihal Thomas elaborates the current evidence on diagnosis and management of endocrine hypertension in pregnant women in Chapter 19. Imaging is an integral part of final diagnostic evaluation of most endocrinopathies. In their Chapter 20, Catherine Ordage and Anju Sadev portray the latest evidence on imaging for patients with endocrine hypertension with classical pictures for most disease entities. Pragmatic and systematic clinical, diagnostic and therapeutic approaches are of paramount importance in the day-to-day -day management of patients with endocrine hypertension for appropriate and optimal resource utilization. In their comprehensive chapter 21, Michael Stoverser, Peter Jansen and Martin Molle perform this very difficult task to empower clinicians with the best evidence. We extend our sincere thanks to Professor Ernest Schifrin the Editor-in-Chief to the American Journal of Hypertension for writing a foreword for this textbook to the Global Scientific Fraternity. The editors and authors have tried the level best to provide the readers with the latest evidence on endocrine hypertension 
by compiling the most up-to-date scientific literature. We hope the readers of the book shall benefit from each of the chapters of this textbook. Thank you.